We're uh, here today with Dr. Sarah Smock. Uh, Sarah is a, a colleague of mine at Texas Tech University. and uh, Sarah and I worked together for a long time at Texas Tech before I, I made a move to the University of Minnesota. But Sarah is um, involved in research on solution-focused brief therapy and is really, in, in my opinion, one of the, the main uh, scholars in the United States who's kind of doing research in, the, in, this, uh, in this therapeutic uh, arena. And um, I know, Sarah, that you don't, you don't work alone. You have a, a colleague that, mm -hmm. that has kind of been a mentor to you as mm -hmm. well as now a, more of a colleague to you. Mm -hmm. Can you tell me a little bit about your relationship and, sure. and, and who that is? And, Sure. Um, I'm not sure if I should look at the Just camera. Right here. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, I've been working with um, Jana Bablis, who's mm -hmm. one um, of the co-authors of Pragmatics of Human Communication, mm -hmm. since January 2007, and I met her at one of the Solution Focus conferences. Um, she had come before, but she did the plenary in 06, um, November of 06. And I asked if I could come just see what she does. So I went to University of Victoria, where she's a um, retired professor now, and went for a week and expected to get a big jump on a new project and come away with, um, you know, having some data and analyzing it. And um, After a week, I realized that this is a very long process. <laughs> what she does. Um, she's a communications researcher. Her mm -hmm. background's actually in experimental psychology um, she, from Stanford. And she was at MRI mm -hmm. and worked with uh, Vlatsvik and Weekland and um, Jackson and um, Steve DeShazer and Insu. They had passed through it at a different time, mm -hmm. but had similar mentors. Um, John Weekland was a mentor to her as well as Steve mm -hmm. DeShazer. So she already had an interest in um, solution-focused brief therapy. And I guess about 10 or 12 years ago, Stephen and Sue had come to her place and were um, they were hearing about what she was doing in terms of the type of research process research she was doing and um, really kind of drew her in and then she would come to that conference in 06. And so um, her research, microanalysis, basically looks at um, dialogue sequences, moment by moment utterances in real time. And so her analysis is done using videotape, which is very different from like conversational analysis that uses that analyzes off transcripts. Um, mm -hmm. We analyze off of videotapes. Um, she's really um, the front runner in using this methodology, in, especially in clinical research. Mm -hmm. um, so I went there and um, expressed interest in a project, and basically she sat me down and said. I want you to just watch videos for a couple of days and tell me what you think is interesting. Mm -hmm. So her approach is inductive in nature, it's mm -hmm. not deductive. So I had to really shift everything I'd learned about research um, and think about it in a totally different way. Mm -hmm. And so I just sat and watched clinical video after video and there was one video that I watched, a Carl Rogers video. Um, where I noticed that the client went from smiling and laughing to in tears in about 30 seconds. Mm -hmm. And I thought, what <clears throat> is going on um, in that interaction mm -hmm. that made such a dramatic switch? Most of the time our clients come in and, you know, it could even be the opposite. They come in and they're, you know, they're sad, they're crying, and they maybe are more cheerful. But this was the opposite, and I was curious about what went on. Mm -hmm. um, and that's really where I started with my first project. Um, and the first project that I did with her, we communic after I left that week, we com started communicating via Skype about um, two hours every week we would meet. Mm -hmm. um, one of my graduate students, Adam, would meet with us um, online, and we'd start to analyze, figure out the type of project we want to do, mm -hmm. and go from there. It took us about a year and a half to do the first full analysis. We analyzed six full-length therapy videos, three solution-focused and three cognitive behavioral therapy. And we were just looking at the type of content, whether it's positive or negative. So we developed our own rule book, as she would call it, instead of a code book, uh -huh. um, inductively and with examples. And I think it's about 25 pages in length on how to code our um, project and analyze it. And so we just started from there. and. Um, that was the first project that I started with her on. Um, Adam then, as a grad doctoral student, wanted to do use microanalysis in his dissertation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
we <clears throat> used a study that she was doing at the same time with two other colleagues, Peter DeYoung and Harry Corman, who were solution-focused therapists, um, and used part of their project as well as the project we had done on mm -hmm. positive and negative content and did his dissertation. Um, and we, in the meantime, we've uh, presented the last several years. We've finished articles on all of our projects that we've started. And we're starting a new project now um, where we're trying to come up with a new unit of analysis in mm -hmm. this uh, in this methodology. Analytic yes. mm -hmm. uh, methodology. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. She has all, she is one of the few communication researchers that um, looks at dialogue instead of just monologue. Mm -hmm. And we are so mostly a didactic process. Two two people ha at least have to be there. Yes, okay. exactly. And so as a communication researcher, it's unique that she actually is studying mm -hmm. what's going on in that um, in that dyad. We are trying to for the first time figure out a way to measure. Uh, have a unit of analysis that's didactic. It's not just my talking turn and then your talking turn and analyze separately, but a way to create what's called, we're looking at grounding sequences. So I will say something, you nod in response like you're doing mm -hmm. right now, and <laughs> and I may laugh or have a facial expression that right. lets you know that I've received my received message. Your, yes, yeah. exactly. Mm -hmm. And so that's what we're doing right now is we're going through and we started talking about this project at the European Brief Therapy Association meeting um, what was in Malmo, Sweden back in mm -hmm. September. Mm -hmm. We are at, let's see, this is, gosh, this is August already. Mm -hmm. It's been almost a year and we're still working on the code book. So uh, we you've got to figure out when to punctuate those yes. sequences to make that one unit. Yes, exactly. And all the exceptions, you know, uh -huh. um, we have to figure out what do we do with all the exceptions. Again, it's inductive, so um, we just look at video. Like today we looked at a new video clip and it was we found something new that we had not found before. Mm -hmm. and we have to figure out how do we put it in our code book or our rule book and how to analyze this particular situation. Mm -hmm. Um, so it's taken in terms of training, you know, this is not something I learned in my coursework as a doctor. You didn't have a microanalysis course. No. <laughs> and, uh, and even if I did, that would have just kind of scratched the surface. Yeah. In, in this particular methodology, you really have to spend a lot of time. I've been working with her for four years. I'm just now at the point where I feel like I could start something from the ground all by myself. Mm -hmm. Um, just because... Uh, the nature of the methodology. It's mm -hmm. um, very unique. It's not structured step-by-step, -step right. deductive. Um, so, but the <clears throat> the plus side is it's so exciting because this is what we're doing as therapists. I mean, we communicate. Uh, we had a discussion today about teaching therapists and how this research really informs how we teach and how we mm. train and how it's so useful, not only in the research world, but also in the training world and the clinical world. And um, there's a lot of holes and flaws in how we teach people to be mm -hmm. therapists. Mm -hmm. And I think especially for doctoral MFT students, it's an interesting thing to think about um, how we're going to train the next group of students that come along to be therapists. Yeah, so your research has obviously clinical, implication, mm -hmm. you know, clinical implications, uh, but also for training clinicians. Um, so it's interesting when you talk about we're trying to figure out a way to code dyadic mm -hmm. exchanges. Yes. Right. It would seem to me that at some level as a clinician, you or myself, when we're sitting with clients, that we are doing that anyway. Mm -hmm. That somehow we take those chunks, however you're punctuating those, mm -hmm. those interchanges, and we make sense out of them somehow, and we make a decision about how to respond or, or whether to respond or not, and then how to respond. But we, but we probably don't have much of a language for that. Yes. Which is probably what you've been exactly. grinding about for the last year or so. Mm -hmm. And it fits really well with solution-focused therapy because we believe that language is important in this whole idea right. of co-construction. This is our attempt to try to measure co-construction. Uh -huh.